So what we talked about uh, at the beginning of, was it, but did we meet before Ramadan began? I think we did about a week or so before or something. And we talked about at that time, even for those of you who are only fasting a little bit, that even if you're not fasting from food, what are the important things you fast from that are not food and water? Could someone raise their hands. What are some of the things? Yes. Muhammad? You fast from saying any bad words or you fast from looking at bad things, listening to bad things or right. doing bad things. That's right. That's very true. And our wonderful brother, Hamza Yusuf, who is the president of Zaytuna, he sent out a wonderful little journal, a little booklet for Ramadan to keep in your pocket. And all day long, you can check off, did, I, missed, I did my prayers. I recited some Quran. I, I, gave, I was generous. I gave something away. But then he put a little square. It was, did I watch my tongue? And that's what we're going to talk about today, because that's such a big deal. You know, we're, we're loving Imam al-Ghazali. I'm going to tell you something he said, and then the rest of the thing, we're going to have a conversation between us. So imagine, we have our language, don't we? I mean, birds seem to have a language. Dogs seem to have a language. But what do you think about the human language? Isn't that an, a miracle? You can have a thought, and then you can say it. Don't you think that's that's pretty amazing? What do you think? Yeah. So language is amazing. We're lucky to have it. We're very lucky to, to be able to have language. But believe it or not, language is the biggest difficulty, according to Ghazali, that we have in polishing our heart. And then he points out, look what we can do with our speech. We can say, subhanAllah. We can say, um, la ilaha illallah when we die. We can use our speech for many, many, many things. It's wonderful. It's very, very special, right? So this is something that Ghazali says. He says, truly the tongue is one of God's greatest gifts and most wondrous and subtle, very subtle of his creations. It's small in size, but huge in power, everyone. Tremendous in power, right? We can use it to obey. We can use it to do the wrong things. We can, um, nothing that exists or non existent. We can, it, 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 it's the most, the tongue can reach and talk about it. The tongue can talk about Allah, right? It's the most special organ in our whole body, our tongues, our voice. And nothing can resist it. And it can do a great deal of good, and it can do a great deal of harm. Would ever, someone of you talk about some of the harm you could use with your tongue? What is some of the harm or misuse of language and talk, tongue? What would you all say? Okay, Anissa, what would you say is something bad you can do with the tongue and something good you can do with the tongue? One thing you could do bad with the tongue is Say something that you actually tongue. didn't mean to say, but tongue. or if you were upset or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just slipped. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the tongue. good things you can do with your with your tongue. voice and your tongue? You could tongue. Um, say something nice tongue. to somebody. Of course. Tongue. So that's that's a good use of ang a good use of language. So what I'm going to do is Ghazali wrote a book. And he went through about 25 things that are good you can do with your tongue and 25 that are not. But I made a list of a few of them. And what we're going to do today, we're going to take one at a time. And then each of you are going to talk about how you could see that being used or how you've experienced. Okay, the first one. When we, um, when we use our mouth, we can lie, right? And lying is bad, but sometimes... There's a good lie. So what could a good lie be? Okay, um, let's see. Uh, yes, Muhammad? Like, um, maybe if there is somebody that, uh, so let's say maybe there, there's a burglar trying to get somebody's, yeah, what's going on? Trying to get somebody's money. 
And then while trying to get it, the person, the, the person behind him says, um, the to the burglar, that man doesn't have any money. Okay. Oh, I see. What a great idea. That's a good idea. Maybe sometime there's a little girl and she's not very pretty. And she says, how do I look? And you would, what would you say? Ugly or pretty? Good. Yeah, you look good. Yes, because that's a good. But normally lying is bad. Why? What's wrong with lying? Because if you lie, you just keep you just keep on lying just to lie, just to to save that lie, and then you and then you keep on lying to save that lie, and just keep on lying. And you know, you sometimes can't forget. You can forget what you lied about. Like maybe I was um, telling a friend, like, no, I don't have a box of cookies. You know, that we can eat, and of course I have cookies, and then. She comes and asks me, do, do you have any cookies? And I can't remember, did I lie or not? Did I say we had cookies when we did? So lying also can catch you up. The truth is always the best. And you know, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. You can just some, say to someone, I'm sorry, I spoke, I spoke wrongly out of place. It wasn't true what I said. So we can always do that too. So lying is an issue, all right? What about... Um, the tone in which you speak. Okay, I want each one of you to say something, how you'd speak to your mother or a brother or friend and say it with a good tone and then say it with a bad tone. Okay, Anissa, we'll start with you. I'll be your mother and I'll say, Anissa, would you like to come help serve dinner? Okay, now give me two tones that you can answer it in. Sure and fine. Perfect. Sure. Boy, Anissa got it correctly. Okay, let's see. Um, who are some that haven't spoken? Who hasn't spoken? Someone speak up. Who would like to speak? I'm volunteering Manaya. <laughs> okay, well, go ahead. And then Ariana, you want to speak next? Yeah. Okay, give us an example of saying, saying with a different tone. Okay, what happened? Someone says... What do they say to you? Someone says something to you. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe your father comes in the room and says, oh, I think it would be nice if you picked up your room, picked up your clothes off the floor. And there are two ways to answer. Let's hear your answer. Yes. I would say, uh, okay. Or fine, whatever. See, see, because what we heard in fine was you were impatient. You were not being patient with your father. It's amazing how the voice can show being patient with someone and impatient and really just putting up with them. You know, you know, that's a good thing. Okay, everyone else. Okay, um, Anas, Anas, would you give an example? Do you want to give an example? For example, if my if my dad ah. said, uh, uh, for example, if my dad said to clean up, he had two options: one like okay, or and the other one like fine. Fine, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So you can see how you can use your tongue to show it's very it's very unpleasant, isn't it? You know, if somebody is impatient with you. I have someone and she tells me things and she always does it like she's really put out, you know, because I'm older and I get confused about um, whether I got scam on my email. And she would say, instead of just saying, uh, you know, you have to be careful, you know, watch out. She'd say, I have told you a thousand times, right? That's not very nice, is it, to do to somebody? Okay. Um, who else would like to give an example of tone? Yes, Ariana. So if like my parents say to go do something, I would say, okay, sure. But if like I don't I didn't really want to do it, I'll say, uh, okay, fine, I'll do it. Yeah, you make it sound negative. All right, okay, I'll do it. Yes. We want to be cheerful, right? You know, it's important to be cheerful and, joy and joyous, all right? So tone, all right. 
Now, here's another thing that you could do with your voice, all right, with your language. Okay, say a friend comes to you and she says, I'm going to tell you a secret. And this is just between us. And don't tell anybody. And you say, I promise. What are some, what are some of the things that you can do wrong about secrets? Okay, and that's, would you like to say something? So, for, uh, for example, if you like spoil the secret, so you, so the friend said, do not tell it to anyone, but then you just go to school and then tell every single person you see this about the secret. And, yeah. Who else? Who else wants to talk? About it? Yes. Who else would like to talk about secrets? Well, there's even another subtle thing that can happen. Subtle means very hard to spot. Maybe even you could keep silent about something. Someone would say, now, um, was so-and-so on time to school? Maybe the teacher is saying that, right? And you could just go like that, make an expression. You're not actually speaking, but your silence is already ratting on your friend. You see what I mean? Are there moments where you could speak up, you know, but maybe being silent can also be like speaking uh, badly about someone. Give an example, someone of, of doing something like that. Just make up an example. Okay, who would like to speak? Okay, Maya, what, what would you give an example? Um, an example is like, like when you put this isn't like your sisters like do something and you don't and and you don't want them and then you know about it but they don't want you to tell like yeah. that they're doing it like tell them that like, yeah like threaten them or blackmail them. a blackmail I'd forgotten about blackmail that's yeah. I, I'm gonna write that down on my list blackmail yeah blackmail wow Wow, examples of blackmail. Give an example of blackmail. Another one. Like if you know somebody, something like secret about somebody else, you kind of tell it to it's everybody. Sort of you you use it against them. them. Yeah, you, and you use it against them. Like you have dirt on them. Yeah. Isn't that horrible? Yeah. Are you starting Back to, to blackmail? Yeah. So are you starting to see how many ways you can use your precious tongue? It was meant to read Quran and praise Allah and say nice things. Look at all the ways you can really do, really misuse and abuse this beautiful little tongue Allah has given you. Okay, then, okay. Then there could also be teasing or mocking somebody. Everybody talk about a time they got teased or they teased someone. All right, every, let's, everyone has to contribute about teasing. An honest story, okay? And we all do it, and it all happens to us. When people used to tease me when I was a little girl, it made me so sad. But then also, I've teased people too. Okay, everyone speak. Okay, one at a time, everyone give an example of maybe a time they got teased or and, and also a way that they could tease somebody in their family or, or at school. Okay, go ahead. Oh. Maya starting, I think. Maya, are you going to start? Maya, go ahead. Okay, Maya, Hannah. Oh, I forgot to lower my hand. Sorry. Okay, what about the two people on either side of you? I want them to then talk. Would they each? Okay, tell about a time. She's whispering. Tell about a time that you got teased or you teased somebody. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, like at school, um, we were doing um, like a basketball unit, and like I was going slow, and like the people on my team were like, "Why are you going so slow?" And stuff like that. Oh yeah, you're 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 slow. Yeah, they're teasing you. Oh, you're yeah. so slow. Have you ever teased anybody? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Maya, go ahead and give your example. We've got you on right now, Maya. Um, an example is that, uh, <laughs> uh, 
Thank you, my hand. That, um, <laughs> like, I got teased. When we were doing volleyball, like, I couldn't throw it over the hoop, over, like, the net, over the over the volleyball net. And then, and and they said that I was, like, not that good at volleyball. Oh, And, yeah. like, serving. Oh, that's so sad. Have you ever seen people tease people and say, oh, you're wearing those stupid shoes, or you're wearing a dress that's not nice, or... You yeah, don't have yeah. That too? Like... It's sad. Yeah. <laughs> Is this your brother next to you? No, that's my sister. Oh, sister, I couldn't tell. Your hair was back. Okay, sister. Um, has anybody ever teased you for any reason? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, not really, no. No, you're okay. You're lucky. All right. We'll go out. Anissa, Anissa, talk about teasing. Teasing. Never, I've never really been teased. Let, let Anissa, Anissa's going to talk now. Anissa, go ahead. I've never really been teased. Never. Mm -mm. Have you ever teased anybody, a, a younger brother or sister? I don't have a younger brother or sister. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, so Anissa hasn't, ever, have you ever seen teasing going on? Have you ever watched it at school? Yeah, it happens regularly. Describe it. What hap What have you seen? Give us some examples of what you've seen. I don't know. Like maybe, hey, your shoes look ugly or something. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. What about Anas? Would you give us an example of teasing? Inas, Inas, maybe I'm mispronouncing it. Um, there are a couple of hands up for Tassin and uh, yeah. Yusuf Salma. Yeah, could you be in charge of, of putting them on? Because they're not showing up on my screen. You are in charge of the getting the kids. Okay. Sure. Yusuf and Salma. Okay. Um, one time I was at school and um. So I was walking, I was walking at the basketball courts, and then I heard somebody call somebody stupid. Oh, you see? That's terrible. That's terrible. And what about your sister? What teased, what, have you seen people being teased? Um, um. Do you tease people? <laughs> yeah, do you tease people? <laughs> she teases me. She does? Yeah. Oh, like what does she say? Yesterday she called me a grandpa because oh. I was slow. <laughs> um, <laughs> yesterday she came up from the couch. She also pulled me around the no. kitchen and then she also pushed me around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you were being so slow. And then this morning, no, she slapped me on the arm. I did not do it. I, I went and like then, this. And then two also. minutes. Stop and it. My, stop it. Stop <laughs> it. I did perfect not slap stroke. you. Perfect. I, did, I went like that. And then, and then um, um, like 30 seconds ago, she pinched me on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, <laughs> this morning, I was. I was sleeping yeah, and then and funny. then she told and then she put really loud music on so I asked her to turn it down and I she said oh. really that's enough example <laughs> okay okay well I think we've got a good couple I want you all to act out arguing because arguing is a thing you're never supposed to do so would you two pretend to argue you and your sister about something you oh, my God. okay <laughs> okay. Uh, okay let's have an argument okay <laughs> Okay. Just get Hello. in the picture. Get in the frame. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. You're ugly. Go this way. You suck on this way. <laughs> You're ugly and I don't like you. Clap. Clap, clap, clap. You're mean. I don't like you. You called my best friend ugly. So you're ugly. Slap, slap, slap. Slap. And scene. And scene. I, mother, I like mother. Mother is the artistic film director in the background. Hello, mother. <laughs> That's great. Well, people don't like it listening to people arguing. It's a terrible thing to do with the mouth, isn't it? Arguing. 
when I, I hear people arguing, it's just so horrible, I can't stand it. And yet people, are, even though we don't like to listen to it, do you like listening to people argue? Have you ever heard your parents ever have a, an up? Yes, Anissa? Anissa, well, yes. About the people who argue for a living. Oh, you mean lawyers? Mm, yeah, but there are also some people who argue for a living. Like who are they? I don't know. I don't remember the names, but there are some people who make money because they're special. Lawyers? Lawyers? Mm -mm. Debate teams? Debate team. Something like that. Yeah, debate team. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think in a debate team, you're actually trying to learn. Oh, you're trying to learn to win, right? You. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, arguing. Uh, yes, uh, Hannah. Oh, um, Maya, you wanted to say something. Okay. Um, unmute, unmute yourself, honey. Unmute okay, yourself. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but I, I don't like listening to arguments because yeah. it makes me scared. Okay. And um, it's and and arguing is something that you're not supposed to do. And like, I don't like like how people like yell and fight and fight. Sometimes, sometimes people take it too far and actually start hitting. I yeah. prefer negotiating instead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, nobody likes arguing. And remember, when we were studying uh, the 10 things Imam al-Ghazali said we can never do, he said arguing is one of them. Because, of course, what you're doing, do you think the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, do you think he would have argued with people? No. No, no, no. So we're trying to copy him, right? And the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he thought of the other person first. Now, when you're arguing, are you thinking yourself first or the other person when you're, when you're the one arguing? Yourself. You're thinking yourself. I want to be right. I'm the right. I got it right. You're wrong. You're wrong. I, I hear people going on and on arguing, and it really makes me feel so upset inside. You know, don't you? So arguing, we're not supposed to do. And Ghazali said in the Book of Knowledge, he said, if you're arguing with somebody, Let's just say this wonderful brother and sister arguing, and then one of them realizes, oh my gosh, I'm arguing. And you stop arguing. There's a hadith that says the person who stops arguing in the middle of an argument just stops. There's a special, special place for them in paradise, in Jannah. And then there's another hadith that says, if you're arguing with somebody and you're right, like let's say I'm my husband and I are driving in the car, right? And I keep telling him, we 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 got to take exit 10. And he's saying, no, we're supposed to take exit 9. But I know it's exit 10. I'm seeing it on the map. If rather than argue, and if you're right and you give up arguing, just let the person do what it is, then you get a very special, marvelous little palace in paradise. Now, whether that's literally true or whether it's meaning you're uplifted in your spirit to a high level, which is the thing you want to do, that's what we're talking about. So arguing is a terrible thing to do with this very precious tongue we have. You know, arguing is bad. Okay, then um, what about, let's talk about subtle ways you show off. Okay, it's called like name dropping. Oh, um, I'm just casually talking. Let's do one of you. And, you know, oh, yes, uh, we had a wonderful trip. We got to go to New York. See, I'm showing off, right? Oh, and, you know, we met the Queen of England. It was really lovely, showing off and name dropping, you know, and it's hard. Uh, I got an A++ on my exam, right? What are we doing? We're using our voice to push us up so people will think, wow, she's, but, you know, if somebody does that, if they're showing off and name dropping, I don't actually like them when they do that because I know what they're doing. But the truth is the person who's doing it, sometimes I do it myself, I think maybe people will like me better if they know I went to New York, if they know I have a new car. So we do a lot of things thinking people will respect us more. But you know what? You can see right through the person who's showing off. Okay, so every we're going to go through and everyone will give a, say something in which they're kind of showing off or bragging. A, it, it, just anything that you, you could say to someone. Okay, start at the beginning. Everyone raise their hands and everybody do it. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Tassine has been with for a long time. Tassine, okay. is she there? Tassine Saida? Tassine? Do you see her? Because I can't see her. Her camera went off, I think. Oh, there she is. Tassine's back. Can you unmute? Yeah, I'm unmuted. I'm going to put that, that gallery thing. And then, oh, look, wow, there she is. All right, good. Okay, you pretend to um, brag and show off. Say you're talking to people and give examples of how you just do it. All right, go ahead. Oh, my school is really big. Uh, I have a new MacBook, so I got the newest iPad. I got the newest and iPad. It's so big. Yeah. And how does that make the other person feel? Like, it makes them feel like they're just trying to brag, and it, it makes them like not really like you a lot. Yeah. Like, you're trying to make them feel like they think you're trying to make them feel like you're better than them. That's right. That's it. And something we also learned, my dear, the other day is that um, when you do that, I've got a new iPad, you might make the other person sad because they wish they had one. You might make them have envy and they want they envy what you have. We don't want to create envy. Remember the story we were talking about? One of the things you can do, um, there was a man who lived at the time of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he didn't wear his new fancy clothes when he went out because he didn't want people to wish they had them. So even thinking about how we act, that we don't want to cause envy because not only are we bragging, but then we're causing more bad things to happen because envy is no good. Okay, who else would like to talk about bragging and showing off? Yes, um, Yusuf. Yes, Yusuf and Selma. I have a phone. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I also got my dad also got the new Tesla for free. Okay, I'm because... en I'm envying you already. Okay, it you it worked. Okay, do I think you're a nicer person? No, you were really nicer before you said that. Okay, but we all do it. Okay, everyone. Now your sister, please, would you give an example of uh, bragging and showing off or name dropping with your friends? Um. <laughs> I met the president. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I met the president. Yeah, precisely. Yes, sometimes that could be inter interesting information, but it, it depends on your intention. Now, when you said you met the pres president, were you trying to show off or, were you, or was it let everyone know that when you were in Washington, D.C., this important opportunity came? Were you showing off or did you do it to really pass on information? Uh. What did you do? She tried to show off. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. All right. Oh, who else would like to speak now? Uh, Anita, go ahead. So um, let's pretend I'm this person. Okay. And I say, I go ice skating every single day and I have classes that are private. And then after that, I play the whole entire day until I go to bed, video games, and I'm the richest person there. Yeah, see, see, I'm just, now we are all listening to you. Did anybody like her more because she said that? Everybody, did any of you like her more? No. In fact, we start to think this poor girl, Anissa, she doesn't have enough security in her own golden heart. She feels she has to, say more to make people like her. But you know what, Anissa, we're all doing this. Everybody does it. It's really depressing. You know, it's really depressing. You know, yeah. You know, so, it was just a joke, right? I don't actually have that. No, no, I know that. I know you are giving an example. I, no, we're, we're all, this is only examples. We're, 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 we're learning from it because we're showing other ourselves how easy it is to use our tongue. Okay, Ariana, Ariana, tell us some ways you could you could uh, show off and, and. So, um, I'd say like, oh, my parents got this mansion. It has like three stories 
and I got this new video game, and it's really cool, and no one has it. Oh, boy. Whoa. This is terrible. Okay, so we all know this isn't fun. Okay, next we're going to play the gossiping game. Each one of you is going to gossip about somebody, you know, backbiting. Oh, you can pretend. Oh, did you know? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, who wants to start? Okay, uh, Yusuf, go ahead. Gossip. Did you know that Suma's hair is fake? <laughs> she wears a wig. <laughs> and that her glasses are actually just a pair, a pair from the dumpster. And um, <laughs> she, she lives in a dirt hut in the middle of the desert. <laughs> okay, so you've gossiped. Now, if your sister then spreads that around, right? Passes it on, it can become a scandal. Okay, so what are you going to do with that information? What are you gonna do with it, Soma? Yeah, you, you turn it into a scandal. He's <laughs> whispered some gossip. Now you go to the school and what are you gonna to do to create a scandal? Tell somebody. <laughs> uh, everybody, tell everybody. <laughs> oh, say on the microphone thingy that, that the, uh... Oh, yeah, the PR system. Attention, attention, yeah. everybody. Uh, Soma lives in a dirt hut in the desert. <laughs> and, she wears, and she has wears uh, glasses from the dumpster. You know what? You all are really good. Would anyone else like to give some examples of backbiting? How you subtle backbiting. Uh, you know, putting somebody down, talking about them, just a little bit to someone. So who will be next? Here comes Safa. Okay, Safa, Safa. Um, her family's poor and she wears rags. Uh, she has so like swollen shoes and it has, her clothes has dirt. Right. Now, so you've, you've now back bit, you've, you've mentioned this. If you had to correct yourself, what would be the right thing to do in this situation? You've seen this little girl who has very little, who has poor clothing, through no fault of her own, she's living like this. What could be something good you could say with your voice to help that little girl? I would say, um, she, um, I'm sorry I backbited to you, and um, I hope we could be friends. That's really lovely. And then I was just thinking as, as she was saying this, that maybe what she could do is she could go and talk to some other people and say, let's give her a hand. You know, through no fault of her own, her parents have fallen on hard times. Maybe you don't want to collect and give her clothing because that would be too obvious. But what about ways of including her? What are ways a little girl like that you could you could talk about behind her back? What are ways that you could actually make her life better? Let's all think. What what would you what would you do, Anissa, to help that little girl? Probably include her and in, with the stuff I do. Yeah, I, I had a something happened yesterday. Um, a man came uh, uh, to wash our windows. We do it twice a year. And he and his friend, but of course, people don't hire window washers in the winter when it's raining and they wait for the spring, right? So he and his friend were washing the windows. And then he just looked at me and he said, he said, lady, uh, I, I need to find work. And he said that to me, all right? I could have just said, you know, uh, thank you very much. And here's the fee for today. And, you know, I'll, I'll ask some of my friends. And then I thought, and this is really, I, I'm crying to tell you. Then I thought to myself, this just came to me. It's like, we know the Hadith. Allah said, um, when, when I was sick, why didn't you visit me? In other words, Allah was giving you a chance to visit a sick person and he was present there. So I thought this person is standing in front of me. And so I went into another room and I called a neighbor and I said, could you get your windows washed? Maybe you don't need it, but it would help him. And they said, sure. 
And then they thought of someone. And then I put his phone number on my iPhone and I took his contact, Willie the washer, window washer, and went to all of my friends and said, here's somebody, not do you need your windows washed, who really wants to find work. He needs money. And you know what? By the end of the day, we had like 16 people all doing it. And that was simply using my voice in a good way. Something sad came and I could have ignored it. But that's another way you can use your voice. Don't you all think? Just like um, uh, Anissa was saying with the little girl that was um, so poverty stricken that she would include her, you know, and respect her, you see? And, you know, it's funny listening to you all today. You know, when we, some of the negative things have been saying, like, I, I'm bragging because we're rich and we have a Tesla, right? But then um, negative would be using the voice and saying, oh, that person, you know, really has shabby clothes. But what we're forgetting here is we're judging people by what they have rather than what they are. And this is a very big point. You know, I remember when we lived in Egypt, there was a very poor man and he did live in a mud hut and he never pissed, missed his prayers and he was a sweeper, he swept. And in fact, when he died, you know the position of prayer called sejda, when your forehead is on the ground? He was in his sejda position and he died in that position, right? And then there was a very rich man saying, oh, these people don't have anything. They don't even have Coca-Colas. And I thought that poor man who lived a humble life and prayed, he had all the wealth, the wealth that matters in the world. It didn't matter, the big company and the country clubs. So one thing we have to be careful always is to keep our hearts open and know that the person in need in front of us is an opportunity for us to give, share, even kindness, share all of the things we've been given and in, 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 in so much uh, so much of it. All right, let's see. We've talked about gossiping, scandals, lying, blackmail, um, the tone of the voice, d divulging secrets. We've talked about teasing and mocking and joking, joking around, I think. And we've also talked about arguing. And then we've talked about, oh, we have a few more. We've talked about showing off. Do you all know what hypocrisy is? Hypocrisy is, in Islam, it's really bad. It's called nifaq. And you can't, you can't, it's really bad to be a hypocrite. Does anyone know how to define the word hypocrite? Go ahead, Yusuf, go ahead. Someone who says something but does the opposite. Yeah. In the book of uh, knowledge, we had to, the, the man telling the children how they had to be nice to animals and they should let the bird out of the cage. And then they noticed he had a dog tied up and the dog's water bowl was turned over. People, and, and Imam al-Ghazali himself, that's what happened to him. He realized he was a hypocrite. He was lecturing in Baghdad. He was the smartest professor in the world. He was great. And he was telling people, you know, you must never lie. You must never be hypocritical. You must never. He was telling people, students, to do all these beautiful things in Islam. And then he thought, oh, my gosh, I'm not doing all of these myself. I'm just telling other people to do it. So that also is something that can happen on our lives. Okay, would a few of you give examples of something you could do that would be hypocritical? Okay, go ahead. Anissa, go ahead. Uh, let's say I'm at a party and I tell somebody, hey, you should wear a mask, but then I'm not actually wearing a mask. Of course. Perfect example. Excellent. Okay. But so reality is very... you wear a mask. Yeah. Good for you. All right. Tasneem. Tasneem. You could be telling people that you should be a you should like study a lot, a lot of the time, and you should make a mess and stuff. But uh, in reality, you don't like study a lot, and then you have like a really messy brain and stuff. Yeah, you're right. I'm always telling people to, you know, clean up their desks or 
fix their closets and my desk and closet are a wreck, you know? <laughs> so any more examples? I see other hands up. Okay, Ariana. So for example, you tell someone you should, like you shouldn't lie and you should tell the truth, but you yourself, you usually like lie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Safa, you have something to say? Um, like you tell someone to pray and then you don't even pray yourself. Oh boy. Look at the voice, all the things the voices can do wrong. But the tongue, that's hypocrisy. And then, then also Imam al-Ghazali says, a lot of us do a lot of waste of time talk. Just blah, blah, blah. And it'd be better if we were silent. To use our tongue just for, he calls it vain talk. Just talking, talking, you know, about nothing at all. You know, can you all think of some subjects you could talk about that's just total waste of time subjects when you could have the beauty of being silent? Safa, could you answer that? Um, like you could sell um, someone, um, it, um, um, you could talk about people when um, you could talk about um, people when they're, um, um, but then you shouldn't. Well, exactly. Yeah. Just a total waste of time, isn't it? To use yeah. our beautiful voice, just, you know. And I, I, I talk more than I should, you know, and Allah says it's to be silent is to be present, you know, to be present for people, not, not just always talking. It's a real problem, just talking and talking and talking. And then, then the problem is sometimes you get careless in your talk and you say things that are wrong or they have errors in them. So we, we're, people should, I mean, we, our speech is very precious. We have language. Shouldn't we use it carefully and be careful with this beautiful gift we've been given? Yes, it's a beautiful thing. We, we can't. And so you hear sometimes people saying bad words. Do you ever hear that? I yes. mean, every single movie they put on television now, people use really horrible language. And it's, it's so, I don't know why they think they have to do it. Isn't it awful? You know? Do you all hear people saying yes, bad words? Yes, really bad awful. Words? But yeah. a lot of people in my class say a lot of bad words, and like the teacher doesn't really care. Uh oh. And yeah, um, well, my I... old teacher used to always tell us, "Think before you speak." Exactly. And there's a there's a hadith that that we learned about in in a class, like about like it's if they if they do every. If they do the opposite, like if you tell them something, they will like. They will like. They'll if you tell them a secret, they'll but they'll uh, tell somebody else. If you um, if they if they promise you something, they won't promise you anything. Oh, breaking promises. And, yes. Yeah, and um, and if they, and if. And if 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 they um if they talk about people and backbite when they're not supposed to yeah yeah that's one of the the things that hypocrites do yeah in well, the worst of ways yeah that's a good hadith yeah it's a good hadith I remember it vaguely but she's good to remember it isn't she yeah. So um, I think we've covered just about everything. Now, aren't you all now, all of you as a group, I mean, our class ends in about four minutes. Aren't you all now suddenly more aware of your tongue? And it's not just things that are obvious, like lying and bragging. Yes, yes I'm really aware of what I say, even though I don't really, I don't really use bad language. Okay. Yeah, but I'm more aware of what it's not like good to what say it, and what is good to say like what like what's not like okay to yeah. say to people like it can hurt them <laughs>
I see Adam and Fahad. You didn't speak yet. Would would Adam or Fahad say something? Uh, yes, we are. Yes. Yeah, we're well. Yes. We're we aware of all the um things that we've covered today. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I really love today. And I just want to say something looking at you all. You're really beautiful children. Every single face I see, it's, I'm just thinking, mashallah, mashallah. You all are a beautiful. Let's just stay friends forever, you know, and report in. We'll, we'll have meetings, okay? And I can hear more about how you grow up in all these wonderful ways because honestly, just us having this conversation today, you may have preferred to be outside playing or doing something else, but you know what? I think all of us will take away an, an awareness that we'll, we we might we're gonna might catch ourselves doing something and maybe we'll be able to stop it. What do you think? Don't you think so? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anyone would like to make a closing statement about today or about speech or the tongue? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Can the other people? Yes, it's a uh, Hannah. Is it Asil? It's with you. I see a hand up. Nope, nope. I really like the lesson and what you taught us. And yeah, like knowing that there are that things we should and shouldn't say to people. Yeah. And or or even even the tone. Yeah. Yeah, like and how you're how you should speak to your parents and how not to speak to your parents. And how to speak to your friends and not yeah and how to like use your tongue correctly because um because the tongue and um be careful of what you say or yeah. what like other people say to you yeah because it might not be good yeah not to argue yeah. it's not good to argue yeah it takes all your energy sometimes if you argue too long yeah it does isn't it amazing? The tongue is so little and it can do so much damage. I can take my hand and hit and hit, but even hitting, I don't do as much damage as what the little tongue can do, right? Yeah. Anyone else like to have a, con a concluding remark? Anything they've gained from today? Anissa, yes? Be careful what you say because you cannot take it back. Ah, you know what a child told me? Wait till you hear this. This is great for you, Anissa. It's like a tube of toothpaste. You squeeze it. You can't put the toothpaste back in, can you? Right? So remember, when you just make that little remark, you can't take it back. You've hurt somebody, okay? You can apologize. That's important. But you can never take it back. So don't say it to start with, right? Anybody else? Well, then I, I wish you all a very blessed Eid in just a little over a week. What are you all going to do on the Eid? How would you celebrate it? Yes. I'm going to celebrate it by waking up late and eating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's great. That's a good way to celebrate. What else? Who else? How else would the others celebrate? Will you get together with family or? What will you do? Anything special? Anissa? I probably will make my mom gifts. Oh, what, what are you thinking to make her? What, what, what are some ideas? I'm not really sure, but I think she really likes cats and tea. That's so great. So probably before she wakes up, I'll make her tea. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, how sweet. I, yeah, that's like, okay, and Hana, Athen, Asil, that group, somebody's saying something. Go ahead. Um, well, my sister, she wanted to say something. Like, thank you for the lesson. And then Eid Mubarak. Yeah, Eid Mubarak, everybody. Yeah. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, and come to Kentucky and visit me. You can have Kentucky Fried Chicken, and you can go to the Muhammad Ali Clay Museum with me. So would you all come and we'll have a visit? 
Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, I've loved being with you today. And I've learned a lot myself because I've really been thinking about it. And I bet I'm really going to be watching myself now because we've talked about like 12 or 13 ways. And of course, there are many. So I love you all very much. Kula sano antum taibin. Wafi amanila and barakal al My blessed family. This is so much fun. And thank you, Munir, for getting us all together. Okay. Salamu alaikum, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.